Hello and welcome to Paint to Life. This is the Epic Encounters box set paint job and review. Um, if you missed the episode number 64 on Paint to Life, How to Speak Draconic, you can check the link right here. But if you're here to see how I painted this bad boy up, you're in the right place. I'm also going to be reviewing this Epic Encounters box set graciously donated to me by my friendly little gaming store in St. Catharines, Ontario, called Phoenix Rising. So special thanks to Phoenix for donating this to the channel. So right out of the way, we're going to open up the package and see what comes inside. Um, a little heads up, later in this video there's going to be a gory incident with a knife. Ooh, that should get you excited. Um, there's a fair warning though, so if you're weirded out, it's not really that bad. And there's also some shoddy camera work. When I recorded this, I had set up a new rig and I'm used to painting miniatures. This wasn't very small and it did not need to be as close to the table as I had it, so I apologize. So. What comes in this box set from uh, Stormforged Games, or Steamforged Games, sorry. Basically the idea of this product is an encounter in a box. It's for 5th edition, uh, you could also use it on Pathfinder. It's scalable to be run for your players of any level, from low level with a young red dragon to a medium level with an adult or a high level ancient. So out of the box we get the encounter book, some kobolds, some lava pools which can be punched out, little tokens. Good quality the game mat itself which we'll see later and then the dragon um, also in this I'm going to touch on I did use this with my D&D &D campaign and my players will touch upon it here's the game mat pretty good quality I hate creased up things like this it's almost impossible to get the creases out and have it lie flat I don't know if you could iron it out um, I didn't try that the mat was a good quality very uh, nice contrast in colors with that lava of any critique I'd have though was that it was kind of hard to see some of the details uh, like the higher level areas, the teeth, the treasure pile, it all kind of blended together. It could have been a little brighter to see some of that. And the encounter book, if you're a seasoned dungeon master there's nothing in there you've never really considered. Um, but if you're new to the whole thing, dungeon mastering, you might find something in there uh, that is useful for you running an encounter that's a little bit more than a tank and spank. So now onto the dragon miniature itself. Uh, coming out of the clamshell packaging, well protected. Um, it's made of a hard plastic, it's not very supple. The plastic has sharp edges, but it's not fragile. It didn't get the sense that if I dropped it, it was going to break. So that's good quality. And uh, as you can see, the edges of those wings, those look knife-like edges. So um, all in all, Looking at all that you get for the value of the set, I think it's about $50 manufacturer retail price. I think it's a good deal. Um, you could do this at counter multiple times by scaling the difficulty. And I ran it for my players and I'll kind of go over what I did for it. It comes with some cobalt tokens and has a bunch of built-in traps. I started the encounter easy. Um, I had a hard time getting the players to go into the cave. They didn't necessarily know the dragon was going to be there. I told them I was going easy on them with just kobolds. So you want to make some reason for them to go inside. I had a hostage there up on a cage as you can see. So as they easily dispatch these elite kobolds and kobold uh, alchemist and suddenly boom the dragon pops out of the lava cave and blocks the exit. As you can see my players suddenly realizing that they were in over their heads because uh, they'd already taken a wallop from the kobold, so the combat with the dragon was pretty fun. I used some of the suggestions in the encounter book to, you know, stalagmites, fa tights falling from the ceiling, a loose coin piles for difficult terrain, and of course the dragon's fire breath just busting everywhere. But the players were level 7, there were 4 of them. This is only the young red dragon that I used, and using some creative spell casting and a failed save that's a duck because it was the dragon was reduced and then it was grappled just long enough for them to get escape uh, get out of there and then the dragon decided to chase after them and they lived to fight another day and the, he'll become a recurring villain so that's how i used the box set in my campaign now looking at the dragon itself out of the box i think it looks pretty good even not painted the red and the gold underneath him has some good details, so even if you're not interested in painting, I think it'll look pretty formidable on your table. But that said, this is Paint to Life, and we're here to paint the dragon. So I wanted to make this guy look like a magma dragon, so I went online looking at pictures for inspiration. Different dragons like Deathwing from World of Warcraft, anything that had like a lava interior with a black exoskeleton and, and different shades of red. and. 
After looking at all these pictures for inspiration, that's how I decided to paint him. So with that said, let's take a look at the color wheel that I used. I most used entirely Citadel paints. You can pause it here if you want to look at this list. And let's get putting this guy together. Now my first criticism of this product out of the box was the assembly. It's only two wings. The base doesn't come apart, but as you can see here, I'm struggling trying to figure out how to put these wings on. Do I have it backwards? Do I have it upside down? What is the problem here? Why don't these just click in? In fact, they should, shouldn't they? They have a little tongue and groove, as you can see there. It looks like it lines up beautifully. However, despite pushing on this, there was no chance I was getting these wings seated properly. And I'll show you some pictures of that in a second. Additionally, there is no removing this dragon from the base. I thought, well, should I take him off the base at least so I can paint the gold separately? No. As you can see, as I'm looking at it, trying to see if he's glued on, is he pegged on? Gave it a good squeeze, gave it a good pull. It wasn't gonna happen, so. Although the good news is they're all coins, easy to paint even underneath his belly, and there's a good bit of clearance from his stomach to the coin pile. So let's take a look at this dragon now that I've assembled the wings. See that? Look at that seam. That's not even fully plugged in. Oh, another thing before we get started, always wear gloves, because I'm gonna have to trim these wings in order for this to fit. So using an X-Acto knife, I'm going to start to shave off parts of the plastic that are obviously not tongue and grooved properly. Now, I don't know if I had a defective model. One of the guys at my friendly local gaming store said that he had no problem. So maybe mine was just a bunk box. I don't know. Um, but as you can see, I'm using this tiny little X-Acto blade and I'm just whittling away. And then I'm trying to refit it, whittle some more, try to refit it. And I ended up taking a lot off more than I should have had to. That's for sure especially for what's about to happen to me. I upgraded to a bigger blade. Now, this is a slight gore warning, so skip ahead about 20 seconds if you're a little intimidated. Boom. As I was trying to take a gouge out of the dragon's wings, my blade broke and I sliced my knuckle on that. So remember, always wear your gloves when using knives, just like this. <laughs> yeah, see, I didn't learn. I'm not wearing gloves still. It was a superficial wound. It didn't require any stitches. And frankly, I wasn't cutting towards myself, but it definitely was something that shouldn't have had to happen. I shouldn't have needed to cut, carve this dragon as much as I did. And you can see the gouge in my knuckle. It could have been worse. And um, you know, all joking aside, you really should use gloves. I guess I said to myself, well, now I won't make that mistake again. And as you can see, I've taken off enough. It's starting to seat properly and fit properly. So I was kind of near the end, but uh, the more you know, safety first. If you're using an X-Acto knife with hard plastic, wear gloves, people. All right, so now just using a little bit of crazy glue, um, I affixed the glove, uh, the wings, have to hold it for quite a while. This is Gorilla Glue that I used, the gel. So put a fair amount on and hold it in there real tight. Now, luckily I did get the wings to sit, but as you can see, there are some seams. So I'm going to take care of that in the next step with some of my uh, liquid green stuff. But as you see, now he's assembled in front of the DM screen. And uh, like I mentioned, pretty good for, I mean, it's not gray. All right. So out of the box, you could use that on the table and it'll look great. So I'm going to use a little bit of liquid green stuff to seal some of these gaps in his wings. So the first problem I had with this product, as I just mentioned, was the seams and the fitting of the wings. Now that obviously there's a gap, I have to fill it. I'm not going to complain about that. I'll fill it. But we're about to move on to the next thing. And I didn't even think of this. And this is probably me being a noob. But if you're noobs too, listen up. You should always wash your miniatures before you prime them. When they're poured, they put a releasing agent on so that they come out of the molds clear, cleanly and clearly. I never even considered this. I paint so many Nozlo's Marvelous Miniatures which come pre-primed, and even if I prime them or strip them, I don't usually have to worry about washing them. This particular dragon, I kind of ruined. The finished paint job, you'll actually see the problem that I'm about to have for the rest of my painting with it because I didn't wash it. Just a mild soap and water, give it a good scrub with a toothbrush or your hands in a, in a rag. Get off whatever agent, that releasing agent they put on there before you prime it. 
because as we're about to see, I didn't and I'm going to pay the price. <clears throat> Those two things aside, I did enjoy painting this model and it is a pretty straightforward paint job, but um, we're going to get into a little bit more details as to what happens if you don't wash the Vaseline, for lack of a better word, off of your model. So let's take a look. Here he is all prime, he's all filled up. His cracks are filled. He's ready for a good coat of prime. There he is, nice and neatly primed with chaos black. Now I'm gonna start painting him with some corn red. It'll be my first base coat. I'm gonna paint that all over and then I'll layer him up from there, right? And why in the hell is this paint not working? I must just need a little more on my brush. Maybe I have a little too much water. Nope. What the? Look at the paint beating up. I can't get coverage. I should have washed it. Those are not my actual hands or my actual sink. <laughs> so I took it to the sink and I washed it after the fact, after it had been primed. This is a pre post wash. You can see some of the, I even sprayed it with isopropyl, al isopropyl alcohol and it's still kind of beating up the red. It's not as bad as it was because whatever it is probably underneath the black so I'm just gonna have to go with it. See that? The adhesion of the paint to the primer is just not good. But take a look at the finished product here. You can see when it's all said and done, it actually kind of adds to the effect I was going for. So I'm just gonna go with that. <laughs> but back to my nightmare. Here I am painting this now and I'm just, I'm just gonna have to overkill it. I'm just gonna have to put on a lot more. I was planning on doing this red a little, I wasn't just gonna spray the whole dragon red or I would use my airbrush. No, I was trying to apply it in certain places, not others. Um, so basically I'm kind of doing what I've heard other people call a wet dry brush. I've heard some people use this term on painting channels and other YouTubers. And that is I'm applying with a big flat square brush paint almost like I would dry brush it, but it's very wet and the brush is very saturated and I'm pushing down hard to try and push the paint through that, whatever is causing it to not stick. And I'm putting it on a lot, but there are some parts where the black is still showing through, hence the concept of a wet dry brush. And I'm okay with that. I guess I determined that, well, I guess this dragon is a combination of black and red. So he doesn't really need to be full red. Originally, I had planned on him to be a red base coat. Now it's going to be like a black and red base coat. And um, ultimately, that's going to come back to really help the dragon when I'm painting the rest of the magma effect. See this like wet dry brushing I'm saying? You know, I'm smearing it all over there, but it's not like a true base coat where it's covering all the black primer. It's just like covering the recessed areas and the higher points are still standing out as black. And corn red, which is this color, if you've never used it from Citadel, it goes on, look at over there on the right, it looks very uh, deep red, but it, it dries almost like like a burgundy. It's very dark and, and, and cool. Um, Mephiston red is still my favorite Citadel red, but corn red is always a cool demonic red because it goes on so red and dries so, um, so dark. So that's cool. And I'm going on the wings. Now I'm not really sure. I think per my idea that the wings are going to be like really yellow. So I'm only going out a bit on the edge there just to, I don't know, get a little bit of texture on those wings, see how it reacts, flip them over. Same kind of thing with the undercarriage of the wings, but there he is. That was his first pass. So now we're moving on to the next red, and this is not my Mephiston red. This is an Evil Suns Scarlet. And why I'm using this one is it's more orangey. And as I transition away from the corn onto other like lava colors, like the oranges and yellows, this is a good next step. So I'm going over the whole model um, in spots on top of the corn red, leaving the recessed areas still black and um, you know, normally when you're making something that's really hot, the recessed uh, the recessed areas would be the light color and the raised areas would be darker. As the metal cools, if you think of a, a molten sword or like a blacksmith, 
the center of the sword is really white and yellow and orange and the outer edge is red and black as it cools from the outside working its way to the core so this is a little reverse to that but know that it's not trying not trying to make it look like its core temperature is a million degrees i'm literally just trying to build up the black with the corn and then the evil sun scarlet and then i will use those direct colors underneath his plates and i gotta be honest with you folks if you're listening to this video and you like my painting shows and my videos and my stories you know we're not i'm not a professional painter by any means i never said i was at this point i'm really not having a good time I'm painting this just saying, what am I doing? Like, I'm still struggling with the adhesion of the paint. You know, the corn red looks sloppy because it didn't stick everywhere. Um, I'm putting the Evil Sun Scarlet on all over the place and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, how the hell, the hell is this gonna work? And as I've mentioned to you sometimes on Paint to Life episodes, sometimes as you're working through a project, you just say, this is garbage, I should start over. And the truth is you shouldn't because every time you paint something you get better through your failures you think i'm not gonna, you think i'm going to forget to wash a model again before i prime it you know even if something doesn't come out exactly the way you'd like you still learn from it and guys remember guys and gals remember everything you produce that isn't sad gray plastic or in this case just this you know fluorescent red it looks better my players were awestruck when i put this on the table when they thought they beat those kobolds and that was the end of the encounter when suddenly roll to see which pool he pops out of and i had to move him to the door so they wouldn't run right past him and run out the door he had to block it i mean it looks awesome my wife calls this a ketchup and drag ketchup and mustard dragon but that's okay i mean it served its purpose it's a cool video about how to speak draconic on the channel. I'm really glad I had the opportunity to try this from Steamforge Games, uh, this whole box set. So remember, as much as right now I'm looking at this like, God, what is this? Again, just go with it. I'm kind of using this Evil Sun Scarlet and I apologize the wing is in the way as like a layer. I'm going on the top most edges. I'm leaving the underneath untouched so it stays corn red just so there's some layering. And you can see where I'm struggling to get adhesion still on the side of the neck, but that's okay. It's a good process. Put some music on, put on some paint to life if you wanna listen while you paint and just have fun with it. And remember, whatever you paint will be better than the last thing you painted. Everything you've ever done will advance and you will have a lot of fun doing it in the process. So as I continue here, we're moving on to a little more Evil Suns, yes. Uh, now that we're on the back, the back plate of this dragon is where the majority of the magma effect kind of comes from. Kind of like Deathwing, if you ever played World of Warcraft, these these big plates and underneath them are the, this is the real magma. So as you can see, I'm painting up underneath the plates to be red but I'm leaving the edge to stay corn red and then the black. This spine here is truly showing us the heat from inside the dragon's cores coming out through the back, through these plates itself. And, or at least that's what I'm gonna try and, and replicate here. The whole concept of paint to life is that while you're painting it you're imagining what this story about this creature is who this creature is why he is or she what exactly makes them tick and while i'm painting it maybe i decide he has a scar here and i paint the scar or i use my dremel tool and carve some of the wing out to represent some age damage to the uh the um, webbing of the wing and that's the beauty part about painting for me it's it's like I'm DMing and painting at the same time. So again, I've got that Evil Sun Scarlet as almost like a layer. I leave the corn down at the base of the, um, the feet and on the back sides, just hitting the individual scales. 
I use just junky synthetic brushes. I don't have any real good ones, but I'm going to try and get some ones, some good ones for now. I just use what's uh, cheap from my local Michael's store or my friendly local gaming store. It has a couple good brushes that I use quite a bit too. But as much as I was disappointed with it earlier, it's starting to grow on me. This model that is at this point in the painting process. Going back up over top of the wing, again, uh, some adhesion issues painting over top of the corn red but not being so it's not so important that I paint everywhere any black that comes through any corn red that comes through is going to add depth and dimension to the dragon instead of just being a solid color so this is more of what I call the wet dry brushing here front of the leg rear right on the tail Now it's time for some Fire Dragon Bright. Now this is the orange that's going to play a role on the magma side. So I'm, again, finding these plates starting at the spine, just gently putting some paint at the high level, trying not to come out too much. I'm using my wet palette. If you don't have a wet palette, you can make your own. I have a tutorial video on that on my tutorial section of my playlists. You should definitely check that out. It's in the uh, Manticore, how to paint the Manticore. Now the, the painting quality of the video isn't the greatest here. The wing is in the way and my camera, as I told you, could have stepped back quite a bit. But anywhere, oh yeah, I'm missing all the good stuff in the mouth. Definitely the mouth. I'm going to build that up lighter and lighter and lighter to the back of the throat to try and get the appearance that he's about to breathe hell out on everyone in his eyes same thing start with the fire dragon orange fire bright orange and and build it lighter with the yellow and let all the way to Dorn yellow and then some OSL around it using some shades like Cassandoro yellow so trying to you know those side scales on the side of his neck don't really have plates so I'm just I don't know. I think I'm wrecking it right now. <laughs> what is I'm telling myself that on the side? Then I go back to the back. The back is obvious. Just push your brush right up in there. Don't clip the Evil Sun Scarlet or the corn or the black above you from the previous layers. Just as if you're peeling back on an oyster exposing this yummy, yummy stuff. That's what we're doing here. Um, on that wet palette, as I was saying before I interrupt myself, I'm using um, a wet palette and then I'm walking, layer, make sure you're thinning your paints nicely. I'm putting it on here so it's very wet so I can direct the pool and, you know, fill in that crack. And if it oozes out, I can direct it somewhere else. And also, since I'm kind of blending these colors, if I miss make a mistake, you might have seen me use my finger a few times to just wipe off the mistake like see right there it's not such a big deal because it's going to I, I don't mind that it's there and it mutes it a little bit as I smudge it with my finger alright so his mouth is full of that chocolate yum 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 it's not chocolate it's orange I'm just saying and then I'm going to start making the wings and I know that they're going to be like a light yellow but I've got the orange out anyways I'm just going to start painting the webbing and on she goes. When you paint dragons, they all start to blend together. Each dragon is kind of its own. You know, they have these wing bones and the wing flaps and the, the claws on the tops and the more you paint a dragon, the better you get. Now, obviously I was trying to keep those bones separated, but then I gave up and decided I'm just gonna paint over the whole thing, which is what I did on both sides. One of those source pictures at the beginning of this video had a dragon with bright yellow wings and the webbing was like white or yellow hot. And that's what I wanted to accomplish. 
It's okay if I spill a little bit on top of his bony edges because it will all be blended together later with some shades and that won't be noticeable. Here's some shades. That's a Fugian orange blended in my airbrush using the Fire Dragon Bright again. Now, if you have shades, and again, I apologize for the camera angle, but you can use shades to cut your paints. It gives you almost like a mini contrast paint. Now I know I'm spraying over what I just painted, but I wanted to use the airbrush at this point um, just to kind of uh, spread, that, spread that out. So Legant Orange is another, another one of the new colors I have. Again, cut with a Fugian Orange shade to make like a runny, but not with water. And make sure you let your layers dry in between. And I'm sorry this is off the camera, but I'm basically painting the inside of his wings with this orange. So it's a bit lighter than the outsides. Now, flash gets yellow. Again, with the rest of the orange that's still in there, I'm just running gently lines up and down to try and make the center of these wing sails look yellow hot, where the edges can blend to stay orange. Now, when I reviewed this, my airbrush technique is, is not, not the worst it's ever been, but I could still see that. See the heavy handedness on that first spray there? I'm using a paper towel to wipe it away. Shouldn't have to do that. I should really have a better handle on my airbrush trigger. And that's just something that comes with time. So once this was all sprayed on, I used a Fugian orange as well. Look at this, see I'm putting too much on there and I have to wipe it away. But I used a Fugian orange and Casadoro yellow, those are shades, and I'm putting that on the whole model, not just the wings. I have all this yellow and I'm going under the wings, which are not exposed. So instead of having the orange, it's just straight yellow on the black primer. And the airbrush definitely covers the areas better, even the parts that didn't get the grease off. So for the teeth, some Screaming Skull to start gently with a nice brush. And some Dorn Yellow for the eye dots. The teeth are the only um, like beige section. I didn't show the eyes further, but I just keep building up the oranges with the fire and then the fire dragon and then the yellow glitz one and the Dorn yellow. Um, again, apologize for the camera angle on that shot there. All right, so next I'm gonna use Relictor Gold in my airbrush underneath on top of all that bl that black gold because it was primed black now some people would say well why are you using an airbrush aren't you worried you're going to clip the nails and the, the feet and yes i was and i did a little bit but not enough because it was the nails were already still kind of black from the primer the areas i clipped the nails actually made it look like the gold was shining on the feet itself so i liked the effect so now some lead belcher, which is like a go-to sieve. There's a sword, a few swords and shields in the pile. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to highlight all of those shields. Whose gray hair is that? Not mine. So there's a shield. There's a shield. Here's some armor. Here's a sword. Of course, they didn't get to loot any of that because the dragon scared the hell out of them and they ran away. Now, flurg uh, fulgurite copper. This loot pile is full of... I don't know, 5,000 individual coins. Now I'm not saying you need to paint the whole thing. You saw me airbrush the pile. But what I'm doing is using that fulgurite copper to individually touch the odd coin. And then I'm gonna do the same with Stormhost Silver and Auric Armor Gold. I'm going around the pile and anywhere where there's a coin that just screams out at me, hey, paint me, paint me, I'll just touch it. Basically any of the flat coins that catch my eye are going to get a little bit of attention. A little bit of layering on that shield there with this Stormhole Silver. There's going to be Copper Coins, Auric Armor Gold Coins, Stormhole Silver Coins, and they're also blended in with their some gems, okay? And the gems, if you've never used Stormhole Silver before to paint gems, it's a great idea and we'll get to see that coming up as well because you want the gems to stand out to give some uh, well-needed distraction to just coins. 
So now we're using some Riza Rust dry paint on these black horns that I've left behind. Anywhere where there's a horn, there's three on his back, the two main ones on his head, the two ones under his jaw. They're all painted black and they're gonna get hit with the Riza Rust to bring out the edges and the details. And it almost starts the process of looking like uh, an OSL around his eye. See his mouth. Now some skeleton horn on the teeth, just to darken them up to look like teeth. You can see we've got the different yellows in there and then the Dorn yellow and then ultimately white in the center of his mouth, which looks really cool. It looks like he's breathing fire, either in the middle, middle of it or he's about to, you know, unleash hell. All right. So we've touched that up. Oh, here's those gem paints. Citadel has some technical paints in their line, they're gems. See the green, the blue, and the red there? Um, each paint is gonna be identified here. And as you can see, I've got my little headlamp on. I find the Stormhost Silver Gem that I had identified earlier. I'm currently using Soulstone Blue. I put a little dollop on it and drag it along. These gem paints dry very shiny but they're also translucent. So by putting them on top of a Stormhost silver base, they're gonna shine like a diamond or a sapphire or a ruby or an emerald. The diamond was just a line from Rihanna's song. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm tired. But I went around, found all the gems in the gem pile and painted them. See the different colors of the silver and the gold and the copper all blending together to look like a treasure pile. Next up is going to be Spirit Stone Red. There are some rubies in there, a nice big long one. You can paint them whatever color you want. Maybe those are emeralds instead of rubies or sapphires instead of rubies, but I chose ruby for the same reason and I'm going through right now and hitting all those gems, the gemstones. As we wind down the video and move into the end, the shiny coin pile was very shiny. Probably too shiny for me. Um, I wanted to neuter it a little bit, bring it down, and we're gonna get to that next step. But you can see a bit of overspray on the wing on the top of his leg looks great because it looks like a glowing uh, wing. Waystone green is the emerald color, so I'm just spreading it on and going around looking for any of the gems I might have missed, like that one right there. A big blob of Stormhill silver now turns into an emerald. One more ruby. Yeah, the lighting on this part is because I am wearing a headlamp. I needed to get some serious reflection of those coins to spot the ones that were pointed straight at me and find these fist-sized gems that were in the pile, which I did, and I enjoyed painting this part of the project. So, as I said, the gold silver copper pile is quite screamy at this point so i'm going to use um, a shade and if you've never tried this i suggest you give it a go it's a shade it's coming up here it's called seraphim sepia i think and it goes on top of gold and mutes some of that explosive reflection money color which you know might be okay but it also yeah, Seraphim Sepia. Here it goes. It also accentuates, just like any other wash, Nuln Oil or whatever, uh, it also accentuates the details between the coins. So there's lots of lines and shadows, and you can see as I drape this over top, the lines and shadows are filling up and gives it a real good depth. So instead of just looking like a big mess of shiny coins, it looks quite uh, three-dimensional. However, the downside of this is it also darkens the contrast. It lowers the brightness of this pile. It's no longer screaming reflective at me. So I need to come at it to bring back some of the luster or else it looks like he's standing on a dirt pile. And that sounds intense, but it kind of is. So here it goes. Coming around this side again. Wings in the way, but applying that shade so that it drips down and causes all those coins to remember their uh, place. 
Sigmarite dry, this is the part that brings back a little bit of the glitz. Just a dry brush application on top of all those watered down coins and we are done. Here's the finished product, him breathing fire. From the angle you can see the riser rust dry brush on the horns, the glowing eye effect, the Casanoro yellow and the Fugian orange that I sprayed on the model. Anywhere where the paint didn't necessarily adhere around the neck, just kind of looks good. There's the back side of the scales. A little bit of ketchup and mustard action. Mm, Touche. But I was ultimately very happy with this. I was happy with the set. My players enjoyed it. Maybe give it a try for your players too. Again, this is the Epic Encounters uh, Lair of the Red Dragon from Steam Forge Games. Retails for about 50 bucks. Go ahead and give it a try. Give your dragon a paint love too. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial and review. I'm GMA Tank. We'll see you next time, people.